Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here for Off Grid Ham Radio. Today we're talking about our portable or field radio antenna strategy. HF antennas we use for portable ham radio out in the field. So I think it's been about a year now since I did a video on the Chameleon Off Center Fed 40. That's a 40 through 6 meter Wyndham style or Off Center Fed dipole, which weighs nothing and is incredibly efficient. That was a first on the channel. I mean, we've tried antennas like the Pactina uh, NFET Half Wave and the Pactina Random Wire. Those are magnificent, but the problem I had with them at the time was uh, they're not waterproof or rugged. And here at 65 degrees north, that's kind of a problem. As you all know, over the years on the channel, I've always defaulted towards rugged antennas. These, you can call them mil-spec or whatever you want to call them. For example, the Chameleon MPOS or MCOM series from Chameleon. All of these are incredibly rugged antennas. They're extremely well made. They're easy to deploy, uh, but they're also kind of difficult to pack and heavy. When we're operating MAM portable, it's difficult to justify that additional weight, even with the ruggedness and reliability of those antenna systems. So. After using the Off Center Fed 40 and learning more about it, I realized that it actually came from someone else. Let's talk about that and discuss why this antenna is incredibly interesting. All right, guys, let's get started. So the Off Center Fed 40 is an interesting antenna. It's basically a dipole, but uh, it's not fed directly in the middle like a traditional dipole, and that's okay. So we have a little bit shorter, uh, about a third of the length on one side and two thirds on the other. We need either a tree or a single mechanism to lift the apex of the dipole up to height. At the moment, in my test setup, I'm using a 10 meters or 33 feet, something like that, carbon fiber mast from Gigaparts. It's a magnificent mast. We'll talk about that mast on the channel as soon as well. Okay, but here's the thing. Carrying these extremely rugged, extremely reliable antennas from Chameleon, like the MPOS or the MCOM series, it's tough because operating MAM portable with a limited carrying capacity or even when I'm on the fat bike, it's difficult to pack these antennas. It's difficult to justify the weight. And if I want to use lower power levels, as I normally do, it's difficult to reconcile the lack of efficiency for those antennas. Now, those antennas do exactly what they're designed to do. Uh, they do what they say they're supposed to do on the wrapper for regional communications, rapid deployment scenario. Absolutely brilliant. But when I'm trying to squeeze out every bit of performance out of the TX500 or my IC705 or the X6100 or even the Yaesu FT818 at low power without amplifiers, I need the most efficient antenna I can get. Now, in addition to an efficient antenna, I need one which weighs as little as possible but will survive the harsh conditions we have here at 65 degrees north. That's not a bad thing. If I can reduce the amount of weight and the size of the equipment that I carry, that's always going to be a good thing. I think uh, most of you will also agree. The bottom line is I don't want to carry these rugged antennas anymore. I want to carry an antenna which is as efficient as possible, has the least amount of weight possible, packs and stows away in the smallest amount of space possible, and gives me the best performance for my QRP radio. I can't do that with a rugged broadband antenna. I need something multiband, of course, even sometimes a monoband solution. But for the most part, something like an in-fed half wave or an off-center fed dipole, these type of antennas have excellent efficiency, but also they have multiband capabilities. So let's go back and take a look at what I came up with with the off-center fed 40, and then I'll show you what I found. So what you're looking at here is a portable wind link session. And the thing making it interesting is how minimal it actually is. We've got the ICOM IC705. We've got the Microsoft Surface. We've got a uh, carbon fiber telescopic mast. And we have the 40 meter off center fed dipole 
making this uh, truly one of the most lightweight setups uh, you've seen on the channel so far. Now, many of you have talked about the benefits of a lightweight station and especially lightweight antennas for quite some time. I've always thought that uh, it's better to have a rugged antenna, which is easy to deploy and simplifies the station setup, than uh, something I have to fiddle with, especially wire antennas out in the cold. Honestly, I still see the benefit of broadband antennas. However, in MAM portable operations where weight saving and space saving are critical, well, there really is no other option than a lightweight wire antenna. Now, I'm sure many of you are pretty much losing your minds right about now as I say this, but I honestly don't say this lightly. I don't want to sound ungrateful about uh, the broadband antennas. They have their place, and I'll still use them from time to time. But when we're talking about MAM portable communications, field communications where weight and space are critical, please give me some other option. You know, even when we're talking about antennas like the buddy pole, any of the buddy poles, these are not man portable antennas. These are car portable, truck portable antennas. They're not even motorcycle portable antennas. So I'm kind of conflicted when we're talking about man portable antennas. Manufacturers simply aren't giving them to us. Now, many of the lightweight antennas we do have on the market suffer from not being ruggedized or weatherproof. I know that adds weight, but uh, there are some antennas which are all-weather antennas, any weather antennas, and we're going to start to talk about those on the channel. Now, before this starts to sound like a rant, perhaps it is, perhaps it's not, I'm not sure, but before it starts to sound like a rant, here's the point. Because manufacturers aren't giving us lightweight wire antennas for 80 meters, 60 meters, uh, and 40 meters, it's up to us to either build them ourselves or find alternatives. And that's where I am now. I'm looking for alternatives, and I think I've actually found one. So, wire antennas. <laughs> I've been talking to an operator uh, with a call sign November 9, Sierra Alpha Bravo. His name is Tim Ortiz, and uh, ironically, he's an antenna builder. Now, before I tell you about Tim Ortiz, let's talk about a blog post that I did. I published a blog post uh, in the first week of February to, uh, 2023, uh, talking about a man portable strategy for portable antennas, uh, HF antennas. And as I've talked about all through this video, we have different requirements when we're MAM portable than when we're using some sort of mechanized transportation. The bottom line, we get the weight and space down and we get the efficiency up. That's the point of utilizing these uh, efficient wire antennas. Now, the downside of these wire antennas is all the finger fiddling. <laughs> yeah, so we know wires get tangled. We know they're more difficult to put up uh, in cold weather in, in harsh weather. You know, you need to get your gloves off, you're going to get your hands cold, and so on. However, with good wire management, with good wire winders, uh, and taking a bit of care, we can deploy these wire antennas in the field with their pros and cons effectively. Now, the point of that blog post was to show the community and manufacturers the problem we have with the selection of antennas we have on the market today. As operators, we can either choose to build these missing antennas ourselves, but truthfully, in the perfect world, I'd like to see antenna manufacturers taking notice and producing these missing antennas for us. That brings me back to Tim Ortiz. He has already taken notice. He understands the need for lightweight, portable antennas, but also the need for antennas to be ruggedized uh, without weighing us down. Now, the Off-Center Fit 40 from Chameleon you've seen the review of on my channel was actually built by Tim Ortiz. Chameleon Antenna and Tim Ortiz did a sort of manufacturing collaboration, which I believe was extremely successful. From that collaboration, we saw the Off-Center Fit dipole and we saw some monoband dipoles. Again, they were actually quite incredible. 
My only question is, why didn't they continue this collaboration and expand the selection? Why they did or didn't continue the collaboration is neither here nor there. Because Tim Ortiz actually has a selection of uh, magnificent antennas, off-center-fed dipoles, uh, monoband dipoles, G5 RVs, in-fed halfways, a variety of antennas that are actually exactly what we're talking about and what was talked about in the blog post. Now, in addition to the strategy and methodology behind these wire antennas in the blog post, I've also left a selection of antennas from Tim Ortiz which can be found in his eBay shop. Now, the two most interesting antennas in his shop are the 80-meter off-center fed dipole and the 40-meter off-center fed dipole. We're going to take a look at other antennas as well later in the year, but for the most part, these two antennas fit the profile that we're talking about in the uh, MAM portable HF antenna strategy. These are both small enough and light enough that we can lift them up with a lightweight carbon fiber telescopic mast. Of course, we have to remove the uh, upper tip. But nevertheless, when we're talking about NVIS communications and regional communications, we really don't need to get the antenna up that high. So this is it. We've got a carbon fiber mast. We've got the off-center fed dipole, we've got the Microsoft Surface, and the ICOM IC705, and that could actually be any radio. There's no tuners, there's no heavy coax, there's nothing extra. This is a minimal data station, and that's exactly what I've been looking for when I'm operating MAM Portable or on the fat bike. So here's what we need to do next. Go over to oh8stn.org and check out that blog post. You'll find the link to it in the description. You'll also find uh, links to the antennas I've been talking about from Tim Ortiz. Now, finally, read through that blog post and actually be honest and let me know what you think about my new man portable HF antenna strategy. Now, ultimately, whether you agree or disagree, that's completely fine. The feedback is really about sharing perspectives with the community. So comment on that post or comment here in the comments. Let me know what you think about uh, this broadband antennas versus uh, lightweight, resonant, or more efficient antennas. And uh, share that with the community. All right, guys, let's go ahead and shut it down. Huge thanks to my patrons and YouTube members and anyone else who have helped to support this channel in any way they can. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please consider leaving a comment, a super thanks, or a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. I'm really liking being in front of the camera. Okay. Ciao.